Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today I want to show you how to make this quick stylized candle animation and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do, please don't forget to leave that like, it will really help my channel to grow and if you're new to the channel and you want to see more tutorials like this in the future, please hit that subscribe and additionally bell button if you want to get notified when I release something new. And before we jump ahead, just a small note, if you're new to the world of 3D or Blender and you want to learn in the most streamlined and efficient way, uh, make sure you check out my courses. I carefully designed them so they can take you from simple cubic designs all the way to the full character illustration in the shortest time possible. So yeah, if you're interested, please go check out the link in the description. Now let's jump right into empty Blender file and first of all, I will just select everything here press X and lead and we'll start with circle. So let's zoom in a little bit and I will press shift A and add a circle here. Now let's go and modify the vertices to 12. That's all we need here. And now press tab to go into the edit mode and let's press S to scale this down a tiny bit. We don't need the candle to be so large. And now let's press E and Z to extrude this on Z axis just like this. And now let's press F to fill and we'll press control R to create a loop cut here and slide it up just like this and release. Now let's press 2 for edge select and let's just select edge like this and press G then Z and move it down. And let's leave this one out and select the next one here. And we can go around the candle to, you know, create this small um, irregularities here to have some interesting shape to work with. And now we can just press Ctrl R again to create one other loop cut here and just slide it up a tiny bit. Now let's press 3 for face select and Alt click this loop right here that should select it all around. And additionally, we can hold Shift and add these parts to the selection. And I think this will be enough. So let's press Alt E and extrude faces along normals. And let's just do an extrusion like that. And now select the top face, press G then Z and move it up. Now press I to inset, press G then Z to move it down. And now press E to extrude, press S to scale, and maybe one more extrusion like this and scaling. So this will serve as a base for our candle. Now we can tab out and we can go to the modifiers panel and add subdivision surface modifier and increase the levels to two even three if you want really smooth result and now right click and shade smooth. So this will serve as a base for our candle, although very stylized candle. So the proportions are of course a little bit cartoonish and to make it more pronounced, we can go back into the edit mode, press Ctrl R and create a loop cut right here. And that will create the supporting loop, right click to release and make this more defined. So it really looks like the wax was kind of, you know, trickling down um, as the candle was burning. And now we can tap into the edit mode. Let's look from the side by pressing 3 on an unpad and we can enable X-ray view here. Press 1 for the vertex select there and just select all of this here and press Ctrl, Shift, Alt and S. And we can additionally press Y to switch the axis and we can shear this little bit so it looks tilted and now if we disable the x-ray view we have our little candle now we can refine the shape a little bit so tap into the edit mode press ctrl r and create one more loop cut and we can additionally press e to make it even with the bottom loop like that and now alt click the bottom loop and let's press s to scale it down a tiny bit just like this and to make it there a little bit rounded, we can press F to fill and I to inset. They'll create this soft edge right there. And now we'll just quickly create the candle wick. So tab into the edit mode and let's enable X-ray view and let's select this face right here and hold Shift S and snap cursor to select it. They will move it up. And now if you tab out, you can just add new object right at that place. So let's disable the X-ray view. And let's press shift A and we'll add single word. If you don't see these options here, just go into the preferences add-on section and search for extra objects. It's available in Blender by default, no need to download anything. So just activate it 
and you should see all of these options right here and you can choose single word and add single word and this is just a streamlined way how to add a single vertex within an object and right after you add the single word make sure you are in the vertex select mode and now we can press e then z and extrude it like this and then we can maybe tilt it to the side with another extrusion and now tab out right click and we'll convert to curve and that will help us uh, because the curve has the geometry section right here in the object data properties and we can increase the depth for the bevel and choose to fill caps and now you can just press ctrl 1 to add that subdivision modifier there as well you can see it here in the modifiers tab right click and shade smooth and you have a simple candle wick just like that now tap into the object and select the top control point hold shift s and snap cursor to select it and we'll create a new object right there so let's tap out and we'll create a flame of course here um, you can choose to add like more realistic fire um, with the simulation or you can import some open vdb volumetric fire but here i want to keep this really stylized um, the candle itself is really cartoonish so i want really stylized representation of fire so i will just model it and create it myself so let's press shift a and we'll add a round cube and again this is the option that's only available if you have the extra object enabled so let's add the round cube and we'll switch the preset to quad sphere and reduce the number of subdivision to something like six now tap into the edit mode and press s to scale it down like this now select one of the top vertices here doesn't have to be exact one and enable the proportional editing here and now if you press g then z you will see the whole thing can move up um, and you can reduce the fall off with the mouse wheel so let's make it smaller and you can drag a shape like this let's zoom in a little bit and let's do that once again so we can kind of drag out this very stylized drop shape and then maybe make it larger and try to protrude it a little bit just like this okay and now let's have some fun and switch this to random so this will be the similar proportional editing but the vertices will move in a little bit random and unpredictable way so let's select some of these on the side and let's make the fall off smaller and let's try to drag it up like this and this will create this weird jacket shape and i really like it for the flame so we can tap out right click and shade smooth and i will leave this fairly low poly and let's make it smaller maybe and push it down and now let's switch to the object data properties and in the shape key section we will create the first shape key that's the basis and click once more to create the first key and now tab in and we'll change this shape so as a first thing we can just change the height of the flame so we can switch this back to the smooth and just press g then z let's make the fall of larger and just move it like this so if you tap out now you will see the shape didn't change but if you start editing the key here you will see you can make this smaller and larger and now let's create a new one tab in and let's select one of these let's see what that does and switch back to the random and let's make this smaller and drag something up we can drag this down for example you know to change the shape a little bit to mess it up like that and now if you work with this you will see this change here so you might have a little bit different result because um, after all this is random so yeah play around with it until you have something you're satisfied with and now let's drag up this part here with the timeline and first let's select the key one and hover over the number here and press i on the keyboard to insert the keyframe and let's do the same for key two and now let's change the timeline to 120 frames and i will hit ctrl and tab right here in the timeline to switch to the graph editor and let's expand this part here and let's click the value key one and we'll go to the modifiers you can see there's no animation happening there there's only a flat line because there is only one keyframe so let's now add some modifier here and i will choose a noise modifier and right here you can see it's doing something but it's really subtle so the first key um, is basically the length the scale so we can choose to add instead of replace because we want to move from zero to one so let's go to the frame one and let's play back the animation and this is what we have here 
Um, first of all, I want the scale to be larger. I want this to be happening at a lower pace because this is like the main flame movement, not the flicker, uh, but like the change of the size and the scale of the flame based on, you know, how it burns and based on like the room um, air movement and stuff like that. So this should be really larger like this. Okay, something like that. And now we can play with the strength a little bit. But don't go too high because if you go over one, that can cause some issues. So let's make sure we are staying under a value of one. Okay, something like this. And now let's select the second value and we'll add another noise, but we'll leave this a little bit more hectic here. Um, maybe not so much. Let's try like two. 2.5 and we'll see this will add that little bit of flicker and we have that like a larger movement there and basically the sub movement of the flickering and we can switch the replace to add to make this more pronounced of course because we don't need to go under the value of zero okay this might work and let's play with the first value maybe make the scale even larger something like seven and this should work just fine. Now let's go to the render properties and let's enable ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space, reflections. So we have a nicer EV preview, but let's switch to the cycles and I will choose GPU and enable some denoising and I will switch to optics denoising for the animation because the open image keeps crashing on me a lot of times. And now we'll just use 64 samples for animation here um, for just the preview quality and for the performance I will reduce this to 512 um, and basically that's it for the render settings and let's go and with the flame selected let's switch this to shader editor and let's create a new material you will see the principal shader right here and now let's press shift a and we'll add a texture and gradient texture and let's press shift a again and let's add converter and color ramp now let's connect this to factor and let's connect this to emission so i will first just scroll down and connect this part here to the emission right here and set the emission strength to something like five and we can play with it a little bit later but here i want to add some mapping as well so let's press shift a and we'll go vector and let's choose mapping Let's connect it here to the vector. And finally, let's press Shift A and we'll go input and find the texture coordinate here. And we'll use the object texture coordinate and plug it into the vector. So basically, we're just taking the texture coordinate, plugging them through mapping into a gradient texture that's black and white. And we'll use the color ramp to um, give it some color. So first of all, let me preview the gradient texture here and let's switch to the material preview by holding Z. And this is what we have right here. You can see the gradient from black to white and we'll need to rotate it. So let's start rotating on a Y axis and you will see how it's turning like this. So we'll need 90 degrees there. And now we can move on the X axis very slightly to move it up or down. And then we can of course play with the Z scale. So it's a little bit more stretch across the flame something like this and now we can control shift click the color ramp by the way this shortcut is made possible by the node wrangler add-on and again you need to go to the preferences add-ons it's available there no need to download you find node wrangler and activate it and then you can control shift click these nodes to preview them into an emission channel and now let's move this you know and compress it a little bit down like that and let's choose different colors so for the black i will go with like a full red color here maybe a little bit darker we'll see how it goes and now for the white we'll go with the yellow and let's make it a little bit brighter so now if you control shift click the principal shader which is how it should be connected um, you will see the final result and you can tweak it some more you know play with that 
relationship between red and yellow and play with the emission strength as well maybe make it stronger or softer something like that and there you have your little flame now we can just continue and add a material for the candle and the candle wick so the candle wick pretty straightforward just add some material and let's change the color to something like a brown color a little bit desaturated i don't want to go all the way to black uh, because that would give this too much contrast and now let's select the candle we'll create a new material and we can switch this back to the timeline we don't need the shader editor anymore and let's make this smaller and now for the candle um let's go with the white color here so we'll keep it like that and with the subsurface we go a little bit yellow tiny bit like this and now i will use some higher value for the subsurface like 0.5 and that will basically cause, let me preview the render view, um, you will see how the light disperses within, you know, the candle. And that's what we want exactly, uh, because the candle wax is a little bit translucent and it kind of spreads the light around. So, yeah, this is what I'm going for here. And now let's finish with the scenes. So let's hold Shift S and snap cursor to world origin and we'll press Shift A and add a circle. Now let's go into the edit mode by pressing tab, press F to fill, E to extrude and X and delete faces. Now let's alt click the loop right here. Make sure you disable the proportional editing, press E again, right click to release and then you can scale it up like this and press G then Z to move it up. Now press A to select all and alt E and extrude along normals. So we'll create a kind of a plate of sorts. And now we can press Ctrl R and add some supporting loops here because I want to add subdivision surface modifier. So let's press three for face select and let's inset this as well. Now we can tab out and press Ctrl one to add that modifier or Ctrl two for some more subdivision levels. Now right click shade smooth and we can create a new material here and we can give this metallic value of one that will make it silver like this, maybe we can reduce the roughness tiny bit and play with the color make it a little bit like a brass now let's select all the objects here with the candle shift click the candle and press ctrl p and parent to object so we can resize this as one object and i will just move it around so press g then shift z and move it on x and y axis like this and now i will hold shift and right bracket to select the children and press Alt D and Shift Z again to create a duplicate and Alt D and Shift Z again to create the third one. And now we can just resize them. I will press S then Z to scale this only on Z axis. Here we can go lower as well and just rotate it around. So we have some variation there. So these will be few candles lying around. We can push them up a little bit because we gave the plate a little bit of volume. And finally, we can press Shift A and add a plane and scale it up. This will be our background. We can create a new material there and make it darker, something like a violet color, really dark. And now if you preview this, this doesn't look um, so great because the emission itself isn't creating a lot of light. So let's press Shift A and we'll add an area light. Press G then Z and move it up. Now let's switch to the disk and increase the size a little bit and we have the cursor here so we can go ahead and switch the pivot point to 3d cursor you can do it with the period on a keyboard as well and now press r then x and let's enter something like 45 minus and let's confirm and now we can rotate it around like this and you will see how it creates this nice backlight and of course we need to go much stronger something like 1500 that's probably too strong because our scene is a little bit smaller so let's go like 750 and maybe let's go a little bit further away with the light but at this point um, it will be great to have a camera in place so let's find a shot that we like let's press shift a let's add a camera and now if you hold ctrl alt and press zero on an ampad it will place the camera right as your viewport is and now you can select the camera press g and move it around and if you press g then z twice you will position it towards the front or back 
and now let me play with the light position and distance here maybe it can go a little bit further away and i think there's too much of a red light um, within these flames so let me select one and right here in the material editor you can just go ahead find the emission and find that color ramp that you constructed in the shader editor and you can change it really easily right here and reduce that red color a little bit and now select the area light and i think 750 is still too much so let's go like 200 and we'll play with the color here let's give this like a blue tone and now we can press shift d to duplicate the light and rz to rotate it to the side and you can see we are still rotating around the pivot point here so let's position the light a little bit better i will press g then z twice to bring this closer and r and x twice to rotate it around its local x-axis and find some you know reflections that i really like something like this and change the color to a warmer tone like this okay i really like this so far and we can go to the world settings and start playing with this color right here to fill the shadows with some of that violet lighting and to save some computing power let's press ctrl b and limit our render preview only for the camera bounce and we have something like this in place now in the render settings we can of course go color management and increase the exposure a little bit and play with the contrast look medium high contrast should be okay and now a little bit of exposure and now you can see how this subsurface scattering really kicks in and maybe if we now add a little bit of the emission strength you can do it right here it will disperse even more of the light um, within those candles so maybe this is too much something like seven should be okay and now to add a little bit more of the visual interest we can go back to our animation switch to the graph editor with Control tab just like before select one of the flames and we can press n for a side panel and just right click make sure you're on the frame one and just right click on the y rotation and add single keyframe and right here in the graph editor we can select that euler rotation and add a noise there as well and of course we need to reduce the scale because we won't be able to see the results too much and now you can see that tilt here when you play with the strength and there will be you know a little bit back and forth movement like there is a draft in the room or something and i think the scale is still too hectic so let's do something like this so it kind of just goes a little bit from side to side and reduce the strength even more so it's really subtle and to make this a little bit more interesting we can select the camera go into the camera settings and enable depth of field click the eyedropper tool and pick one of the flames that will set it as a focus object and then go back with the f-stop um, of course i would use something you know like a 1.4 um, some realistic setting but we are not using the real world scale here so if you really want strong depth of field you need to go lower than one basically so yeah something really small like 0.1 or 0.2 if you want to have really blurry effect on the sides there and now the only thing left is to go to the output settings switch the png to the ffmpeg video output and choose some encoding for example mp4 choose your output folder and go render and render animation and you should see your animation start rendering um, really depends on your gpu or cpu performance how fast this will finish so that's it for this little stylized candle animation. I really hope you enjoyed this one and if you did, please leave that like. And again, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy tutorials like this, please hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.